now if we talk about the advanced FDM design there is a kind of special cases for FDM design and the key aspects to consider while printing with FDM is how to reduce the amount of support required the less the better where you save material and uh, you save the processing time then you want to think about the part orientation and the direction the part is built on the build platform um, um, other techniques that you can use while printing with FDM is splitting the CAD model um, this will reduce the complexity saving the cost and time um, when you have overhangs that require too much support uh, this need of support can be removed by simply splitting the, the part into two or three sections that are printed individually um, then the sections can be glued together and combined and assembled together uh, when the printing is completed so we can see here if you want to print this sphere you need to have this kind of material support uh, when you cut it in half then you can print two parts of this shape and glue them together or even combine them together in, in the design method you want which will save you time and effort the hole orientation as we said we have a lot of problems with, with hole creation using FDM um, so if you want the, your hole to be perfect then you need to support your hole to avoid the hanging uh, phenomena for the print that will be done by changing the print orientation uh, you can remove the support of the horizontal axis holes um, even though it's difficult but you can even sometimes rotate the build direction 90 degrees or as needed so that you don't need any support you just um, manipulate the, the way your printer work and the direction of layers build so that you can ignore removing the support because if you have support inside your hole then you will end up doing your hole manually um, if you have components with multiple holes in different directions then firstly you want to see you want to start with the hidden holes or the the hard to reach holes then you start with the smallest holes up to the largest diameter holes uh, in size in this way you can ensure all your holes are made uh, perfectly as needed so we can see here in this orientation side of view of a cube let's say it have a hole in it then you need to support because the the building will be uh, bottom up so you'll have you will build layer by layer so uh, so when you reach this layer there's nothing to support it so you'll have a kind of overhanging and uh, all kinds of defects so you need to have some, some support here while if you flip the part 90 degrees so now we have the hole in here so you are building your layers so there's no problem you'll create your hole in a perfect way just you change the orientation and you'll solve your problem saved some material for support and uh, avoided a lot of uh, defects that could could show up along the way so fdm is anisotropic nature uh, or anisotropic process um, anisotropic means uh, the material property the material properties change it changed with with the direction along the object uh, so you need to understand the application of the component and how it's built uh, so that you will have a successful design um, FDM components usually are weaker in one direction due to the layer orientation so you want to take care of that uh, for example if we look here if you have your layers building bottom up uh, in this way you can see the tension load is perpendicular to the layers so this way your part is weak in terms of strength in terms of mechanical strength your part uh, is weak if you have your your layers are built this way a tension load in terms of tension load if you have a tension load um, perpendicular to the to the build direction of layers then your part will be strong uh, now if you have a bending load normal to the layers your part is strong in this case um, but if you have a bending load parallel to, to your layers then you can peel off these layers as you can see so your part is weak so it depends on your application you want to keep in mind uh, the build direction and uh, what kind of forces that your part is supposed to to encounter and based on that you decide what's the orientation of your part should you build it vertically like this case or horizontally when you have uh, when you are missing continuous material 
paths and the stress concentration created by each layer joint uh, will contribute to the weakness of the part. Um, so usually these parts bu built with FDM are round ended rectangles uh, as we saw before. So the joints between each layer are small like small kind of small uh, valleys. So this will create a stress concentration there and the crack will usually start to happen from that point. So you can see here you build you built layer one, two, three, four. So you can see you have curve. The nature of the layer is a kind of rounded rectangle. Then the next one will come here. So this is a stress concentration uh, point where the crack could start it. If you have a kind of uh, pulling force in here, up and down, then your crack will start from here. So your layers will be uh, tiered apart. Uh, let's talk about some general rules for, for FDM designs. Uh, if your bridge is exceeding 5 millimeters, uh, marks from the support material can occur. Of course, you have bridging, that means you, you need to have support. Removing the support will leave some marks on your part. Splitting the design and post-processing could eliminate this issue. Uh, if you have a vertical hole with a critical diameter that's extremely small, then you could drill after printing. That will be recommended if you need a high accuracy or you need a functional part. Uh, adding support will allow the FDM printers to print wall angles greater than 45 degrees. Otherwise, you wanna stick to 45 degrees. Make sure that uh, for your 45 degrees, include a for, for your design with sharp edges, include 45 degrees chamber or radius on all edges for FDM part that are touching especially the build plate. I prefer for all, but for, for your build plate, yeah, you can do that. Uh, for application where you have a small vertical pins, you need to add small fillet at the base or consider inserting uh, off the shelf pin into the printed hole instead. Uh, you can always split the model and reorient the holes and specify the build direction uh, so that you can lower the cost, speed the printing process and improve the strength and print quality of your design. Designing for SLA 3D printing. Uh, SLA 3D printing is, uh, as we discussed before, it's a process that use a, a laser to cure the photopolymer resin uh, layer by layer. Um, usually SLA suiting for uh, producing small and smooth parts that have some fine details and high level of accuracy. Uh, in the following slides, we will discuss about the limitations and advantages of designing components to be printed with SLA. Uh, to be able to have a uh, successful SLA print, you need to reduce the forces uh, on the newly printed layers, uh, especially during the sep separation stage. And the separation stage will create areas of high stress along the potentially uh, thin edges. Uh, then this will lead to high part failure rate and warping where the part can usually sometimes it can stick to the uh, bottom of the tank uh, instead of sticking to the build plate um, this is an illustration that we discussed before about the sla so you remember that you have a laser that's been uh, projected by xy scanning mirror through a program on the surface of the liquid container and you create layer by layer and the um, the base plate will will be pulled down through a piston in the thickness of that layer to be able to receive a new layer. Um, the print orientation is important in SLA. When you are orienting a part for SLA, um, you will basically focus on the Z-axis cross-sectional area. Uh, the forces that are applied with a print sticking to the tank, uh, they are proportional to the 2D cross-sectional area of the print. So the part is printed usually at an angle uh, referencing to the plate. Uh, this will, uh, reduc will reduce the support, uh, but it, you know, reducing the support is not a big deal for us. Uh, so talking about the Z-axis cross-sectional area, you need to minimize the cross-sectional area along the Z-axis. Um, uh, that will be done through orienting the part. So orienting the part in parallel with the base plate will create a high uh, cross-sectional area. Um, inclining the part with uh, orienting the part 45 degrees to the base plate will uh, reduce the cross-sectional area. If we look from uh, below, 
uh, from the bottom of this part so the area exposed compared to here is less uh, looking at the this table so you have the design orientation horizontal uh, the horizontal orientation 45 degree angle hor orientation uh, in terms of support material in horizontal it will be minimized you will use less supporting material 45 degrees it will be justified depending on on the design uh, the print volume will be approximately for that part we saw 33 milliliters uh, for the 45 degrees you'll have 36 milliliters uh, the printing time will be 2 hours and 30 minutes for the horizontal and it will be less pr printing time for the for 45 degrees. The possibility for printing failure will be very high in horizontal, low in the 45 degrees. Um, uh, when you are designing, you need to understand why the part orientation impact the quality of, of the print. Um, you need to orient you need to have the right orientation for your component so that the z-axis cross-sectional area is reduced which will result in a good amount um, of support that it need to be added to the model in uh, rare cases the design need a lot of support um, um, then in this case the your printing method is not so effective in terms of cost um, so um, if you are focus depending on the application if you are focusing on appearance and you don't care about the cost being high uh, because you're using a lot of material for support then you can do that um, but the the problem when you have a lot of um, a lot of supporting material then you will have some dents on your part a lot of dents on your part uh, because of these support material so uh, the visual final result will not be satisfactory for you uh, the SLA printing is an isotropic uh, process which means that the material is uniform in all directions uh, so whatever the direction of the material you still have the same material properties uh, because the layers are chemically bound uh, to each other as they are being printed uh, so you'll have an almost identical physical properties in X and Y and Z directions uh, either you print the part in parallel or perpendicular to the build plate the final material properties will not be um, uh, too much different in a noticeable way uh, for the printing features if you have a supported walls in your designs um, when you have a walls that are support connected to other structures um, for at least two sides then you have a chance of warping uh, when you are designing walls with, with these design cases, then you need to have your uh, wall to be having a minimum thickness of uh, 0.4 millimeters or higher. So you have a wall here connected with at least two other object with two faces, then your thickness need to be 0.4 millimeters or higher. If you have uh, unsupported walls uh, connected to the rest of the print, uh, on less than two sides, then there is a high chance of warping or detaching from the print. Uh, these walls, you need to have them as 0.6 millimeters at least in thickness, and they should be designed with fillet. So all sharp corners should be filleted so that you can, so here this, this kind of line should be filleted, this line, inner and outer uh, corners should be filleted so that you can be, your part will be well supported and your thickness should be at least 0.6 of a millimeter millimeters otherwise it will be failing uh, design for overhangs uh, not a too much of an issue for the SLA printing since the part is made uh, inside the photopolymer liquid uh, but uh, if the model is printed without adequate internal and external support structures uh, printing without support uh, will lead to warping of the print uh, but if you print without support, um, uh, any unsupported overhangs can be kept less than one millimeter in, th in length and at least 19 degrees from level. Um, in this way, um, one millimeter in length, 19 degrees from level. This way you will avoid any kind of overhanging problems. If you have embossed details, details or protruded parts of your design, um, any 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 part of or feature that's raised uh, above the surface 
around it, then these must be at least 0.1 millimeter in height. So when you have a protruded part or feature in your design, need to be at least 0.1 millimeter in, in height. Um, so that you can sure that this detail will be able to be printed and visible. Uh, when you have engraved details, like you are engraving inside your part, um, um, if you have a resist uh, feature or imprinted feature to the model, uh, these details could be in risk of fusing with the rest of the model uh, during the printing, especially if they are too small. So these details should be at least 0.4 millimeters wide and at least 0.4 millimeters thick. So it should be 0.4 millimeters wide and 0.4 millimeters thick or high uh, so that you'll avoid this uh, property to be immersed with, with the other uh, parts during the, the layers printing. When you have horizontal bridging, as we can see in here, uh, bridges between two points can be easily printed, but the designer should keep in mind that wider bridges should should be kept shorter as much as needed, um, especially in numbers should be less than 21 millimeters uh, than the thin bridges. Uh, wider bridges have greater z-axis area of contact, which increase the chance of print failure during peeling. Uh, if you are doing holes, holes with diameters less than 0.5 millimeter XYZ axis could be closed during the printing because you know the layers will be little bit moving and relaxing uh, until they solidify. This will close the extremely small holes. Uh, for connections, you need to have 0.5 millimeter clearance between moving parts, 0.2 millimeter clearance for assembly connections if you have an assembly design, uh, 0.1 millimeter clearance uh, for a push or a snug fit. Regarding the resolution, uh, you can achieve a higher resolution in SLA than FDM uh, due to the fact that it's using laser to solidify the material. Uh, the resolution in X, Y direction for SLA depending on the laser spot size. Um, and it can range, range the spot size for the laser from 30 to 140 microns as we will see. Uh, this can, can't be adjusted uh, uh, regarding the printing because the laser is, this is how it is manufactured by, by the by the selling company. Um, minimum feature size cannot be smaller than the laser spot size. So it's it's kind of constrained by the laser spot size. So you have here the laser spot size, you have here the XY resolution, how your laser is moving. So uh, of course, any kind of deviation with the laser movement will be added to the laser spot size diameter in here. So it can't be smaller than the laser diameter. Resolution in Z direction can vary between 25 to 200 microns. Uh, uh, to have a vertical resolution, you will need to take care of the speed and quality. It's a kind of fine tuning between speed and quality. Uh, for parts that have curves and, and fine details, um, uh, you can uh, hard to find a difference between printing at 25 microns or 100 microns. Uh, desktop FDM machine, usually print a z-axis layer at 150 up to 400 microns. When you have a hollowing and cupping, why we do hollowing and cupping in SLA? Um, to When you wanna print a solid part, uh, then you have a dense model. Um, if the print is not supposed to be functional part, um, it's very um, important to have a hollow, um, which basically a hole, hollowing means having a hole in the design or in the model. This will reduce the amount of material needed uh, and the print time. Uh, it's recommended that uh, the walls of the hollowed print to be at least 200, uh, two millimeters of uh, thickness to reduce the risk of failure during printing that, uh, during printing and to keep that hole in place. We can see here, you're designing a sphere, you have supporting material in here, and then while doing that, you make a hole in here so that any kind of excessive material from these layers uh, can be drained down while in liquid stage, can be drained down out of this hole and will not be a defect um, inside that hole. Uh, when you are printing a hollow part, um, always you need to have these kind of drainage holes uh, to prevent 
uncured resin from getting trapped inside the final print if that if you care about it anyway um, because this resin will create a pressure uh, that is embellishing the the hollow chamber and it will cause a kind of uh, phenomena known as cupping uh, small failures cracks and holes could propagate throughout the part and cause complete failure or even the part could explode um, if not corrected uh, draining the holes the holes that are used to to for draining or for hollowing should be 3.5 millimeters in diameter at least at least uh, one hole must be included per hollow section